Developers, we're going to continue our conversation about arrays. Uh, now, not just initializing arrays, but how to add and remove elements uh, from an array once they've been initialized. So inside the arrays folder, I'm going to go into the 31 file and I'm going to load up uh, our little graph so we can see the cute little graph. Here we go. And then we're going to come back over and look at our array. So we have uh, we're starting this off with an object and an array of that one object. So here's that object friend, Alex, and the array my array and that is initialized with one member. Now I have also logged the array at the bottom here so we can keep track of what the final state is in the console and what that looks like. Uh, the array's got one member, it's named Alex. Uh, again, really important noticing that the friend variable and the my array variable, right? The, the friend variable uh, still has a pointer to, it still has a reference to this object. Uh, even though this object is a member of the array, you can still access this object called friend uh, outside of the array, right? Here we are being able to access uh, Alex without going through the array. Again, my example going through my array to access Alex, who happens to be the only object in there uh, using the uh, bracket notation. All right, but this is not always uh, real life in that I know which items I want to have in my array when I initialize and declare my array. I will want to, uh, quite often, pretty much almost every time, uh, want to add to my array. And so to add to my array, I am going to use the push. Uh, and just a, a real quick example with a string. Again, JavaScript does not restrict us uh, in saying that we must push in a specific type of object. Uh, here we've done the push and we have added basically to the end. So push adds to the end uh, a new element, right? Now, I put in push like this actually with the semicolon inside of it. If I run this multiple times, uh, and it doesn't have to be a string, it could be a number. If I run it multiple times, then it's going to put it at the end and then push goes at the end. And so that what we're going to see here is that at the end, we're going to end up with a number four because a new item went in at the end and then boom, we created another item at the end. That's index number two, which is the number four. Now, the cool thing about um, our development environment, if you if you have your focus in there and hit control shift space. Control shift space, it opens up uh, the IntelliSense, right? So the IntelliSense is telling us, hey, this is how you use push. Uh, you could put in a number of items, right? So I could, for example, put in a number of items uh, in, one, in one, one shot. What if I said new items for, I'm saying I want to say four, oh, four, five, and six. Let me take this guy out here. And in pushing in those new items, we'll see that we actually put in four, five, and six, and they went in that order. So a new item went in at the end, four went in making a new end, five went in making a new end, and then six was the last one there. So now we have an array uh, that has five members, uh, index zero through four. Uh, these array members are just like the original array members. You can access them uh, through uh, using the array and using bracket notation. Let me get at the last one, uh, which is four. And there's number six. So I have uh, now demonstrating pushing uh, with uh, multiple items and one item. Let's go in here and pull in another item um, with another variable just so that we can see what this looks like. I want to have multiple examples up on the screen. Uh, you should be typing along with me so that you can mimic what we have on the screen. We have a friend object. We have an array that was initialized with one element. Uh, and now that one element is going to be joined by a new item, right, as index one. Uh, the item number six at index two. Uh, and then we put in a new object that simply has an age property uh, at index four. The my array object has a length of four, right? And that matches what we were expecting to see here. Notice that index number three is also pointing to another object that lives in memory. Uh, here it is, but there is no other variable. There is no variable 
there is no other variable that points to that object, unlike friend, right? So there, the only way for me to access currently uh, that object is to go through my array uh, to access the last member of that array, which is at index three. Uh, and there we go. There we have that object. So this is how you add members to the end of the array. Let me get rid of this. Uh, and now I want to talk about what the ooh, un, unshift function is going to do. All right. Now, for us to do that, what I want to actually work on is I'm going to work right out of the console. Uh, we are going to start this work with an array of two members, Alex, and then this random uh, object with an age of pro, uh, five. Let me reference my array and execute unshift. In fact, actually, I'm going to do it here. The reason why I'm going to do it over here is because I want you to, again, uh, with not, without knowing anything else, you can just hit dot here. Uh, and go through the set of different potential properties. Some of these are not going to be applicable, depending on your development environment. They'll be very accurate. But I know that there's an unshift function in here. And so by simply typing un, you'll see that the IntelliSense is finding it. Now it's filtered down uh, to the function that I want to talk about, and that is the unshift. And what does unshift do? It inserts new elements at the start of the array. So it will insert new elements, plural, again. Uh, so it's telling you that it's going to put uh, new elements at the start of the array. So let's just go with uh, zero uh, and then one and execute that. And let's see what happens. So we see that when we um, console log the array at the end, it has zero and then one. Because I told it to put this at the beginning. I basically told it put put these two guys at the beginning of the array. And it did so in this order. Zero and one. So this is going to be different than what we did before. Uh, when we did the, the push. If I separated the, the uh, push into separate statements. Or did it in one statement. Uh, it had uh, the similar effect. Let's do this now in two separate statements. Because it does matter. I'm trying to be efficient here and just copy paste. We're going to unshift and put at the top zero, right? The beginning of the array zero. And then we're going to unshift and put at the top one. And so you notice that the separate commands, it actually obeyed uh, what we said. Look, even though I might have put zero uh, and one here, right? This works and it leaves zero as the first element and then it puts one as a second element. If I make the call, at the same time with one shift unshift call. But as soon as I separate them, then naturally uh, zero goes to the top. It was originally. Uh, in fact, let me put a console log here so you can see this in the console log, how this is going to behave. So now we have two console logs. The one that has zero at the top, boom, right? It had three members. And so there is uh, the, the, oh, well, then, then now this is our developer tool. So look, our developer tools, if you notice that so when I, I hit that, I get the little information that says the, the, the value below was just evaluated, right? So even though it gave us a little preview when it logged it, it didn't actually interrogate the whole object to spit it out until I hit the little uh, uh, carrot. So what I'm gonna do so that it's a little bit more clear is I'm gonna spit out the first one right here. So we see when this logs, it says zero is going to be at the top. Uh, and then I push or actually I do the unshift. I do the unshift, which uh, essentially takes the, the element that I'm going to pass to it. And it puts it at the beginning or the top of the array. And there I log it and I get the one. So I unshift zero and I log zero. Uh, I unshift one and then I log one, right? So that's what we see uh, in the console. Okay, so that's the unshift. Uh, again, you can do this. No, really important, actually. Really important. Um, you can do this all from here, right? You can do this. So if you needed a, um, just for testing purposes, you needed to introduce a, whether it's a new string. So here, here I am unshifting a new string. Uh, and it tells me how many items am I, are in my array. I can unshift also with an object. So I'm going to put in line an object literal that has a property of, we're going to say has a property of name. And here's my name. 
and I hit that, now I have a length of six. So the unshift, what we're seeing here is returning us the total number of elements in the array, and you'll see that that's how that matches. So that's pop, that's push, and unshift. Push, uh, adding elements to the end of the array. Unshift, adding elements uh, to the top of the array. So let's go back and we're gonna leave a push here. We're gonna leave an unshift there so that we can continue to work with. Actually, if I do this, where does this leave me? I wanna say that this leaves me now um, with an array that has a string uh, and two objects in it. Okay, uh, we can work with that. Now let's work with pop, my array dot pop. And so what does pop do? Um, well, look, it didn't tell us much there. Let's see if IntelliSense, uh, it's not telling us, but look, it is actually giving us a little bit of a hint. It's giving us a little bit of a hint. It's not correct, but let's actually see what happens if I were to execute the my array dot pop. Oh, my array dot pop seems to have given us an object uh, that is age of five. So it seems to have given us this object. What else did it do? Let's go look and see what the array looks like right now. And if we look at the array now, we can see that that object is gone. And so this is actually what the pop does. The pop is gonna remove, right? So the pop is gonna remove from the array the last element. It's gonna return to you that last element. Uh, and it's gonna manipulate the array such that it removes the last element from the array. So now I have my array with only one element in here. So if I were to do this the first time of our last item, right? Uh, I am going to, let's see what happens because I popped out the last item and I've also declared now a variable called last item. Let's see what happens here. Now we have this last item that's being pushed, uh, I'm sorry, the last item that's being popped out and we have the last item variable declared and it's pointing to that object. So there it is. It's being uh, drawn now with the graph. Um, let's do something a little different. Let's say that I'm not gonna unshift this dude. I'm actually not even gonna put in this array. Uh, inside of my array, when I, when I initialize it, uh, I'm gonna put in a string and then I'm gonna have my friend there, right? So uh, in fact, I'm gonna put this at zero because that's a zero index. So I have an array that is being logged to have only one element because this is being logged here at the bottom when I had already popped out uh, the second member. But what we can see here is that the last item, because this is important, I wanted you to see this, that the last item is pointing to friend, okay? Last item is pointing to friend. Friend, before I did this pop, Friend was inside the array. So let's go see that one more time. We're gonna see that friend is inside the array. Friend is being pointed to. Uh, here's Alex. Uh, and also index one is pointing to Alex. So when we pop them out, now I'm gonna clear this variable. When we pop it out, it's really important. This is the, the, the uh, super awesome thing about uh, reference types. Friend maintained the pointer to it, all right? Didn't matter what was going on with the array. Friend maintained the pointer uh, to Alex. And then when we popped them out, we captured that object here. Uh, it just so happened to, I set it up so that the last item would also be an object reference. So last item is now pointing to that object. And it happens to be the same object that the variable friend is pointing to, all right? So now I have a, an ability to, I have the ability to reference that object in memory. That is not a new object. That is still the same object. That's the point I'm trying to drive here. That's still the same object that originated, that was initially used to create the array that we see here. That specific address in memory, uh, we've kept track of it. Exactly, right? It is exactly that object. So if I did a last item here, last item, and I'm gonna do the strict comparison with the three equals last item. Is last item equal to friend? And let's go see. Yes, it is. It's the exact same object. So th that again is more information, even though we're talking about arrays, it's really important to understand how, 
object references and how when we get a reference to, when we get a variable, a pointer to, and when we assign that pointer to a variable, it's going to stick around, right? Until we get rid of that variable. And so that's pop. Okay. Let's go see what shift does, right? Let's go see what shift does. I have driver uh, available. That's fantastic. My array dot shift. So shift removes the first element from an array and returns it. So shift it removes the first element from the array and returns it. So var first uh, first guy first element. There we go. So the first element is zero. And we're going to see that first element is zero. And we remain with an array that has only one element. It has that element, that object called friend that we initial, initially initialized it with. All right. So now all of this you can work with, right? So this is, again, this is just how do I add and remove to the top and to the bottom of the array. The shift, if you, again, you even mouse over it. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit of information, but if you put your cursor in there, uh, you actually have to come back and hit dot shift and you'll get that IntelliSense now over here on the left. It removes the first element uh, from the array and it returns, it returns that element uh, that was removed from the array. So interactively, we can with my array, if I wanted to, I can say my array, uh, well, my array, that's going to end up taking, um, well, look, shift. If I shift again, I get the Alex. If I shift again, I get undefined because I ended up with my array, that length that has nothing in it. So there's nothing to really work with there. I can come back because friend is still in here. Oh, this is cool, right? So look, here comes friend. It's still there. So my array, I'm going to push uh, friend. So now number one is the length of the array. Uh, I'm going to push friend again. Now the length of the array, this is interesting. The length of the array is two, but if you look at the my array, uh, in fact, you're going to see, you're not going to be really able to tell too much. It seems like we have two instances of Alec. So for me to be able to visualize this better, uh, what I'm going to do is actually, uh, and more accurately, I am going to take this particular object uh, and I am going to uh, say I'm going to push in friend twice. All right, so I initialized it with friend and I'm going to push in friend uh, a second time and I'm just going to let that log. And we're going to see that as that logs, here's my array with two members. We see that all of the arrows here end up pointing to the same object. So this object is actually uh, a member of the array twice. We still have to say, and we still reference the array of saying that it does have two members. It's just a, a, a scenario where we have that the array member of zero uh, is three equals for comparison is the same member. Oh, at one, there you go, is the same member at one. And so that's a, the, the now look, there's probably, I mean, there's a group of other uh, functions that are attached to array that you're going to use. These are very, very easily uh, the use case for adding to the beginning, adding to the end, usually adding to the end is going to come up very quickly. Uh, so it's good to, to, to get a look at those. Play around with the other ones if you like. The other ones that are going to be uh, coming up. Slice is going to be a good one for you to work with. Uh, so play around with that. Uh, and now we're going to continue to learn more about arrays.